So hi everyone. The OG AI scientist Andrej Karpati has just dropped a gem of a video covering A to Z about LLMs that is deep dive into LLMs like ChatGPT. As you can see, 15 hours ago, the video is just a crazy bit of piece on LLMs where you it has covered everything from pre-training how fine tuning of LLMs is done, how data sets are prepared, how reinforcement learning is used, everything. The video is just crazingly good and I have just watched it out. But one issue with the video is that it is 3 hours 31 minutes long. And I think in this particular period of time, people don't have this much time span. They don't have this much attention span to spend 3 hours 31 minutes. So don't worry. I am trying to cover the summarized version of the entire video. I will tell you how what he has covered in the particular video. In short, in this particular video. So let's get started. Andrej Karpati's deep dive into LLMs like ChatGPT YouTube video summarized. So in this particular video, I would be explaining all the key points he has explained, but that too in short, what topics he has covered. And if you are interested, you can then jump onto the timestamp to uh, explore that particular point in more depth. So the key points explained in the video are LLM pre-training process, how data collection happens, how tokenization happens, how neural networks are trained. Practical examples, how GPT-2 was trained, computational requirements for this and base LLM models. Post-training, post-training basically refers to fine-tuning of LLMs. Hallucination, one major issue with LLMs that comes and how to mitigate it. He also talked about reinforcement learning and some focus on reinforcement learning with human feedback. Future developments, resources to follow to stay updated and accessing LLMs. How to and from where to get open weight models and how to use proprietary models as well. So let's get started with the first section LLM pre-training process. So in the first section, the first subsection he has covered is how data collection happens. So basically he is mentioning that companies like Hugging Face creates data sets like FineWeb, a curated collection of high quality text data. This can be as huge as 2.7 billion web pages. So once you collect this uh, huge uh, data set, the next step is filtering the data set. The raw data set undergoes multiple stages like URL filtering, text extraction, language filtering, duplication removal, PII information, etc. As you can see, these are the different filters that are used to clean out the data set. And then you get a refined version of data to train the model from scratch. The next step in the particular pre-training process is tokenization. So as you must be knowing in machine learning, no machine learning model can take up text directly. So this text has to be first converted into tokens using techniques like byte pair encoding. I think I've already explained this algorithm quite detail in previous videos. You can check that out. So modern talking about the vocabulary size, modern LLMs like GPT-4 have a vocab of about 1 lakh tokens and token representation is basically a unique ID for each of the token that is generated. Now what? Now, once tokenization happens, after data collection, data cleaning and tokenization, the last step is training the neural network. So, the first step is explaining about the input and output that goes into a neural network like LLM. So, basically the input are the token, the series of tokens and the output is the next token in the sequence. So, for example, this might be your input, the neural network takes sequences of tokens and expected output is as. He has also explained in some detail how the weights are updated and what do we call training of LLM. So basically weights are first of all randomly initialized. They are given some random values leading to random prediction. So like for example if you input the neural network takes sequences of tokens the output expected is as but you might be getting zebra right. So the more wavered the answer the higher the loss is and eventually there is a process called as back propagation. I think if you are into machine learning and work a bit with neural networks, you might have heard this term, how weights are updated using back propagation and optimization algorithms like stochastic gradient descent. Now he has touched a little upon the neural network internals as well, what these architectures are. So if you have heard, these are usually transformer architectures with self attention mechanism. I'm trying to cut everything in short so that you have just have a brief of what has been covered. And if anything excites you, you can go back to the video and understand it in quite some detail. The next section of the video talks about inferencing. So once you have pre-trained the model, how the model is used to generate outputs on unseen data. 
So as you can see that sampling from the model during inferencing the trained model generates new data by predicting the next token in the sequence. The process begins with a set of prefix tokens and the next token is sampled from the probability distribution. So what, what token should be the next given the input is based on probability distribution. So a word which should not be coming out will have a very low probability for example zebra in that particular case and as would be having a higher probability. But still these models are very stochastic in nature. Stochastic means that they are very undeterministic, very random, which can generate diverse output for the same input. This is a very crucial line he has mentioned that everyone should know. Talking about the application, we get models like chat GPT. The model uses its trained parameters to generate responses in real time. Practical examples of training and inferencing. This is the next section he has talked about. So he has talked about training GPT-2 in that case. So GPT-2 is a transformer based neural network with 1.6 billion parameters which is trained on about 100 billion tokens. The context length is 1024 tokens. Context length is basically the input that it is able to intake at a time. The cost of training GPT-2 in 19 was $40,000 but now it has been decreased significantly. I think he has mentioned the number $600. So the way AI is advancing is just crazy. Inferencing process, I think it's very similar to the above one. It intakes tokens and generates the next token depending upon the probability. Now in the next section of the video, he has talked about the computational requirements for training and for inferencing of LLMs. So as you can see here, training infrastructure, they require significant computational resources, often relying on GPUs like NVIDIA H100 and cloud-based GPU services. So GPU plays a very, very crucial role in training and inferencing of LLMs. Data center scale, large scale training requires multiple GPUs working together in data centers. So these are the two major requirements he has talked about in computational requirements for training and inferencing of LLMs. In the next section, he has talked about certain base models like Llama 3, which has about 45 billion parameters and how they are getting used. So I think this is a section that you might be able to skip. It's not that interesting according to me. It's very much similar and he's just trying to explain what are the different types of base models that are also available. Now this is the interesting part, post training stage. So here he has talked a little about fine tuning of LLMs. So basically once you are pre-trained your LLM, now for using the LLM for more specific tasks like healthcare or coding, you need to fine tune it on your custom data set. The base model is fine tuned on conversation data to turn into an assistant capable of multi-turn dialogues. So the model that you see chat GPT, as you now you might be thinking when it is generating the next token given the previous tokens, how is it able to give me answers like human? This is because of the post training stage. So basically now once the pre training is done, when it is able to understand the general patterns in language, now it is trained on a conversational data set, hence making it capable of answering questions. Tokenization of conversations, he has given some technicals about how the data set are created and how conversations are encoded. The inferencing process, the model construct a context from the conversation history and generate the next token. Practical example providing a prompt like what is 2 plus 2 results in a response 2 plus 2 is 4. The model can handle multi-turn conversations now. So this is the difference between pre-training and post-training. Pre-training basically helps you generate the next token given the previous tokens and post-training makes it capable of answering your questions like a human being. Now he has talked about the uh, much awaited, the much asked questions on LLM that is LLM hallucination. So LLM hallucinations occur when LLMs start fabricating information which is not true. Like for example, it might say that Rahul Dravid is the captain of Pakistan cricket team, which is incorrect, which is factually incorrect. So how LLM hallucinations are to be mitigated? So he has given certain strategies around that also. Interrogation, generating questions and answers based on known facts. Validation, comparing model responses to correct answer to identify gaps. Training adjustment, incorporating examples where the correct response is I don't know rather than creating facts. So if it doesn't know, it should say I don't know. After LLM hallucination, he has also talked about computational capabilities and problem solving. Native computational capabilities. LLMs are limited computation per token requiring complex problem to be broken down into simpler steps. Right, like for example, when solving a mathematical problem, this is the example he has used, Emily buys three apples and two oranges, each orange costs $2, the total cost is 13. What is the cost of an apple? 
this should involve breaking the complex problem it should not directly go and answer it it should try to break down the problem steps i think this is somewhere he was relating to chain of thoughts how the llm should go for reasoning even tools can be used for problem solving as you can see so basically you can attach third party tools like web search or code execution to enhance problem solving performing a web search on rare information or writing up python program to calculate complex math problem so these are the two methods he has mentioned enabling reasoning and second is using tools now comes the juiciest part he has also talked about in the later half of the video about reinforcement learning so i think you might be hearing reinforcement learning a lot nowadays because of deep seek r1 research paper also so he will tell you that why our reinforcement learning is used so he mentioned that rl is the final stage of training the llm so first was pre training second was post training and now reinforcement learning training focusing on practicing and discovery of optimal solution the model generates multiple solution evaluates their effectiveness and reinforces successful approaches so i think if you don't know about reinforcement learning it is a basically a system of taking an action getting a reward and depending upon the reward adjusting your action so this is what he has introduced reinforcement learning as well apart from that he has also mentioned about cognitive deficits and tokenization what are the problems where llm struggle on the llm struggle on counting arithmetic spelling character level tasks due to tokenization because tokenization is happening at a token level token is not always character right so it might struggle on certain tasks and that is why i mentioned why llms usually struggle with mathematical problems also initially example some of the examples that he has mentioned is spelling and counting tasks so if you remember that popular problem on strawberry what is the total number of hours in strawberry so he has mentioned that this was because of this particular thing that tokenization happens at token level early models struggle with tasks like counting the number of hours in strawberry but using tools like code execution this can be not done qualitative improvement through reinforcement learning the models high accuracy is attributed to its qualitative approach using longer responses and more tokens to solve the problem so he has mentioned that the longer the answer a mo model gives the better the answer it will be outputting what he is trying to mention and this strategy involves reevaluating the steps trying different perspectives retracing thought process mimicking human problem solving uh, strategies so basically this is why reasoning is more popular nowadays because it helps you to generate more tokens and you are generating a better answer as well emergent properties of reinforcement learning the model discovers cognitive strategies and chain of thought that enhances accuracy right now towards the end of the section he has also mentioned about the popular term reinforcement learning from human feedback rlhf train model using human feedback so here the reward is not coming from a model but it's coming from a human so the human validates the results that are coming from a, the model and evaluates ki okay this answer is correct this answer is not correct and depending upon that taking a feedback from the human the llm eval uh, the llm evolves and the llm improves on its results now there are certain benefits of rlhf as human input is there easier and more efficient than generating idle responses model improves and scalability but limitation also involve a lot of things simulation limitation the reward model may not fully capture human preferences humans are subjective someone may like apple someone may not adversarial example the model can be gamed leading to nonsensical results because humans can be biased also training constraints training must be capped to prevent exploitation of the reward function practical implications he has also mentioned while rlhf improves model performance model can still hallucinate and produce incorrect results now towards the end of the video he has also mentioned about the future developments so he has mentioned that future models will handle multiple modalities i think we are now quite frequently seeing multi model llms coming in perform long running tasks and maybe deeply integrated into everyday tools and workflows what resources should you follow to stay updated leaderboards are must you can follow lm arena leaderboard or any web arena leaderboards are also there any leaderboard that ranks llm performances follow newsletters social media is a must now hugging face you should be following many things are there and how to access and use these models so proprietary models can be accessed through open ai google open weight models are usually present on hugging face and also on olama local deployment if you can load out the models which are present on the git repo and run in your local system as well
so basically i was just in a rush you might be feeling that but i was just trying to summarize the entire video for you what are the different topics covered and what was the crux of the video so he has tried to cover almost everything that i can think of from starting to end for llms the video is a treasure to be honest and i would definitely suggest you if you have some time do watch it out very cool and i think very informative as well